Okay, so hi everyone. Here I am again explaining to you about our second topic which is equations, inequalities and absolute values. Just outline first the learning outcomes that you should know at the end of the lesson. Right? So these are all the learning outcomes that you should have. So first is equations involving sets, indices and logarithms as well as inequalities. So you should know the properties linear, quadratic as well as know how to solve this by using algebraic and graphical approach. As well as we do have rational inequalities as well. And then last but not least, we should have absolute values. So you should know the properties, how to solve as well as the inequalities a bit. Okay, so first regarding indices, we can actually solve them by using equate of the same base. Okay, so for our example here, we have 49 to the power of x squared together with 1 over 7 to the power of 3x minus 2. We can actually, actually express them both in terms of the basic base, which is 7. The same goes with this. So because of that, we make them into one line. So therefore, we are taking this on the top. So that's why we are having negative in front of the power. Expand them up. So we should have 7 to the power of 2x squared. Please remember your power rules of the indices. And then for this one, 2 minus 3x. Okay, so compare your power. We should have 2x squared equals to 2 minus 3x. So expressing this one into a quadratic equation, we would have your x to be half as well as negative 2. You can just use your calculator here. Okay, and then please don't forget one of the important things about equations, you also need to recheck them. So recheck. You can just use your calculator straight away and then determine which one is accepted and which one is not. Maybe both are accepted also. Okay, so let's say what will happen if you have x to the power of half. So your left hand side Put it up into your original equation here. Left hand side should be 7 square to the power of 1 over 4. So you have 7 to the power of half which is square root 7. And then on your right hand side as well, you would have 1 over with 7. 3 over 2 because we already put up half here minus with 2 that should be also 7 to the power of negative half which is when you make it as your numerator that should be 7 also. so accept it for half and then what will happen if your x equals to negative 2 your 7 square to the power of 4, which is 7 to the power of 8. This one is your 4 left hand side. Meanwhile, right hand side, we are having 1 over 7 to the power of 6 minus 2, which should be negative 6, negative 2, so negative 8, which is 7 to the power of 8 also. So therefore, negative 2 also accepted. Okay? Although, though, most cases, you don't need to actually write this like this. Okay? So just recheck by using your calculator only. In this, we should have 5 to the power of y plus 2. Just copy it down because 5 is the basic uh, part base. Sorry. How about 6 to 5? 6 to 5 is actually 5 to the power of 4. Alright. So, 5 to the power of 4 is 6 to 5. So, again, we have to compare. Why? 
Again, we have to compare the power here. So, it should be y plus 2 equals to 4. So, at the end, we should have y equals to 2. So, in case you want to validate your answer, you should always checking it. So, let's say we want to check. We want to check. Just in case you want to use show you're working but then you don't have to show actually all right because you can just insert into your calculator right so now when y equals to 2 your left hand side would be equals to 5 to power of 4 which is 6 to 5 which at the same time is equal to right hand side therefore this will be your answer okay some more example here. Okay, just now we actually overlook our example where we did solve this by using a comparison of power. Equate the same base of power, okay? But then, in the next example, sometimes we also would have a problems that need us to let to use let as the method. So let means that you should make your index as should let your index to be an unknown. Okay. So the unknown can be u, t and so on. So for example this one. If you have to the power of x here and there. You can actually let. So let's say I want to solve this question here. Okay. So I want to let our u to be equals to 2 to power of x. So now we should have 3u. Okay, because we're having 2 to the power of x is u now. So it should be minus 2 equals to u again plus with 1. Okay, so we want to solve for u now. So now u tu macam awak kan ah, tapi u here not u there ok right I'm just joking alright so 3 now we would have u equals to 3 over 2 but originally we want to find x so that's why hence 2 to the power of x equals to 3 over 2 so how to find x my dear Ah, uh, we should learn lah both of them you can just use ln or straight away use log base then eh? so in our level please be familiarized with ln so just put ln for both side so now because x is the power there please remember your rules so we can bring over our x in front so now that should become x equals to ln 3 over 2 over with over also with ln 2 okay so now our answer our final answer should be x equals to it must be decimal. I just uh, the final answer is 0 0.585. Okay. okay. So what about our current example here? We can express that as 3 to the power of 2x times by 3 plus 3 equals to 10 in the bracket 3 to the power of x. And then for this one, we can actually express that into 3 to the power of x, power of 2. Remember the index rule. And then with 3 as the coefficient outside, plus 3 equals to 10 in the bracket 3 to the power of x. Okay. So now... Just let your 3 to the power of x equals to u. So you would have 3u squared plus 3 equals to tan u. So make it as a quadratic equation. So 3u squared minus tan u plus 3 equals to 0. So your u would be 1 over 3 as well as 3. But then we want our x not u. So therefore 3 to the power of x equals to 1 over 3. Hence your 3 to the power of x is 3 to the power of negative 1. Therefore x equals to negative 1. On the other hand, your 3 to the power of x is 3, which at the same time having power 1. So therefore your x equals to 1. Please recheck this by your own, but I already checked this by using my calculator. 
In fact, we accepting both x equals 2 plus minus 1. Eh? Okay, so next example. How about this one? It would be a little bit different. But then I want to clarify a few misconceptions that usually happen here. Which, sometimes, students tend to make mistakes where they actually brought this tuple of x right to the right hand side make it as both with two power of x so that they can omit them out but this one is wrong huh? definitely wrong all right so what should happen here is you factorize two to power of x here so in the bracket we would have x squared minus with one only equals to zero so the, therefore we have two sets of solutions where 2 to the power of x equals to 0 as well as x squared minus 1 equals to 0. But unfortunately, for 2 to the power of x equals to 0, in order for us to solve that, we should learn both sides. Be familiar with ln. So ln 0 is actually having no exact solution inside your calculator. So for this one, straight away make it as no solution. Okay, that's a plot twist. Huh? Meanwhile, for x squared minus 1 equals to 0, it's actually x equal to plus minus 1. So we can here recheck just to validate our answer. Okay, so in a case where our x is 1, on your left hand side, we would have 1 times by 2 minus with 2 as well, which equal to 0 at the same time having the same answer as our right hand side. And then for the case where our x equal to negative 1, the left hand side should be 2 to the power of negative 1 minus as well with 2 to the power of negative 1 having 0 as the answer which have the same form on your right hand side. So therefore both x equals to plus minus 1 are accepted. Okay guys, so see you in the next video. Bye-bye.